Jason Wright is out after the 2024 NFL season, and it is time to preview training camp next on Washington Football Maniacs. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again, and we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about Jason Wright is out after this upcoming season, and we're going to get some important dates and topics for upcoming training camp because it is right around the corner, y'all. So I'm going to give you guys some important dates if you plan on attending and some good storylines to accompany the Washington Commanders with the 2024 training camp because the season is right around the corner. But let's get into the first topic for tonight. But Hey, before we get into that, if you're not a member of the Washington Football Maniacs, definitely, definitely, definitely consider becoming a member because um, we are have a lot of good content coming out your way, man. Good interviews. We're going to have some players, former players. We're going to have all kinds of interviews and content for the 2024 NFL season, man. So definitely, definitely, definitely consider becoming a member, man, because look, we have fun over here, man, but we're maniacs too. So we just a little bit of crazy, but uh, let's get into it, guys. Um, Jason Wright is out after the 2024 season, and he he is now uh, reverting back to a, an advisory role. Now, obviously, his um, era, his time in D.C., you know, is up and down. You have your plus and minuses, but a lot of controversy. So let's get into it a little bit now. Obviously, um, you know, the biggest thing with Jason Wright is that he's always going to be synonymous and connected to the Daniel Snyder era, which is, you know, if you are a Riskins, Washington football or Washington Commanders fan, you know, whether you're a new one or you go back to the Super Bowl days, I think we all can agree that the Dan Snyder era was a colossal failure. Um, he meddled into football operations all the time. Uh, he favoritized players looking at RG3. You know, he just, he, you know, and that's just the stuff we know about, you know, the countless lawsuits of him being a pervert and, you know, him being just a just all around just bad human being. And, I think a lot of us are happy that he's finally out of this out of, out of here, man. You know, we you know Josh Harris has shown in the, you know in a small amount of time that he is not only a capable owner but a owner who, you know, wants to bring glory back to this franchise, who wants to have a connection to the fan base, wants to listen to the fan base. You know, look at stuff like the name. You know, he's willing to listen to, you know, about a possible name change. And you know, he's a guy that you know first day on the job he's buying beers for people. So he's already he's already a better owner than Dan Snyder. So. But, you know, like I said, Jason Wright has been synonymous with a lot of, you know, just complications, man, in D.C. Um, I actually had, um, and I'm going to say the honor because he was actually a, a nice guy personally, you know, talking to Jason Wright. But um, I forget what game it was, man. I was actually um, blessed enough to be able to get a photo with him and Mike Rizzo, the general manager of the Washington National, man. So, um, you know, I was able to meet him. Not a bad, you know, really nice guy. But like I said, just murdered in controversy. So. What are some things that kind of um, looking at his legacy and looking at what kind of legacy he's going to leave, matter of fact. And again, the biggest thing is him working for Daniel Snyder. You can't blame him for everything because Daniel Snyder was just a walking trash can of a human being. But he did make his fair share of problems in, in, uh, in mistakes. Right. Um, but, you know, working for Snyder, I, I feel like, you know, overall, he had a really bad, really bad job. You know, we all we you know, a lot of us have been there. We've had really bad jobs. And. We're going to need Dan Snyder, you know, being there for the transition from Dan Snyder to Josh Harris, not the easy job in the world. You know, he's there for the rebrand. Obviously, you know, most people do not like the commander's name. Um, some people feel like it was kind of Dan Snyder's way of saying F you on the way out. But, you know, you know, Jason Wright had a hard job. Now, he, again, we're going to get into his, you know, his mistakes and what his legacy very well could be. But. You know, I think we all can agree that Jason Wright had a really hard job, man, because working on the game is hard enough. But just, you know, again, any time in an environment where no matter what you do, you're just going to be judged off of just working for Dan Snyder, not the best job to have. But again, not all on him, but there were issues that were on him. Uh, so one thing, you know, um, I don't know if you guys remember late in 2021, um, he actually tweeted the photo of Santa and a snowman urinating on a Dallas Cowboy helmet. Some people felt like it was unprofessional. Some people didn't like it. I personally think it's funny. I mean, if you're if you if you are a NFL fan, stuff like that's funny. Come on, man. I hate the Cowboys. I hate the Eagles, and I hate the Giants, man. So, and you know, you see the stickers behind, you know, on uh, on the back of people's trucks or vehicles, period, where it shows like you know, a little guy peeing on the you know the Dallas or whatever, you know. So, 
I think, you know, I'm not going to get on about that so much, man. You know, I guess, yeah, you can call it unprofessional. And he even he actually responded on Twitter, doubling down and telling fans to kind of chill out. But I, I'm not going to really get in, you know, I, I'm professional. I think it's pretty funny, man. You know, any kind, anytime you anybody pees on the Dallas Cowboys helmet, I have no problem with that, man. Uh, and like I said, um, you can call it unprofessional, man, but it's it, it, NFL's different, man. You, you In Major League Baseball, you probably won't see that. In the NBA. The NBA is his own separate league, man. But the NFL, you know, it, it tends to be a, more of a hardcore sports exp- fan experience, man. So I think it's funny. Uh, but what other things did I not like about Jason Wright? And like I said, I think that Jason Wright was a good guy. He was in a bad situation, bad job, but he didn't make his fair share of issues. Obviously, Sean Taylor, you know, the family in front of the porta potty, very disrespectful in my opinion. You know, I felt like that could have been done a lot better, you know. The late great Sean Taylor, his family should not be taking photos when you finally honor him in front of porta potties. I mean that that was a massive lapse in judgment when it comes to Jason Wright and his organization. I mean, you have the family again of the late great Sean Taylor taking photos in front of a porta potty. To me, that was just so lazy, unprofessional, and it could have been done so much better. If it, it just it just screams that it was done in a rush manner and it really was no care involved because if you cared about the legacy of sean taylor you're going to care that his family is going to be not only, not only taken care of but you're, you're you know you're not going to be taking photos in front of a porta potty so that was definitely disrespectful in my opinion and very lazy uh the sean taylor mannequin i mean let's be real get the man a statue let's be i mean come on now i mean get the man a statue a legit statue I, i'm hoping that the new stadium when it's finally built, whether it's in D.C. or in the state of Maryland or in the Commonwealth of Virginia, I think all arrows are pointing to either staying in Maryland or returning to the um, the District of Columbia. I don't see you know, the, the commanders ever playing in Virginia. And I'm a Virginia guy, but I just don't see it happening. But get the man a statue. You know, and you can argue this by a few other people in the, in, the, in the history of the Redskins or the Washington football team or the commanders that deserve a statue, and he's definitely one of them. I mean, he was just unfortunate to death and – a powerhouse of a player, man, that w- was definitely going to be a surefire Hall of Famer. He just he played that position the way it needed to be played. And it's unfortunate that his life ended the way it did, but he deserves more than a mannequin. I mean, come on, man. I just, just To me, again, it's lazy, unprofessional, and it's hurried. You know, he deserves a statue. So um, let's look at some other things. Um, a lot of errors when he, you know, listing the 80 uh, greatest and the 90 greatest players in franchise history. You know, there, there was errors in that. Uh, the mug of the Washington of Washington State. It's just the list goes on. You know, there were there were definitely a lot of issues. But I think the biggest thing was um rebranding event on NBC's Today show. Um, just so lazy. It just and the fact that he said that the name resonated with fans. Well, I mean, if you look at the polls, nobody wanted the name. I mean, Red Wolves was up there, I mean, Warriors was up there. I mean, obviously, people want, you know, there's a large capacity of people that want risk is to come back. Commanders was not a, a leader in when it comes to any kind of votes. So for him to say that it resonated with the fans screams uh, another PR disaster from Dan Snyder and company. So, like I said, he's made his fair share of errors and laps in judgment. And you can argue a lot of them are really big, especially when it comes to Sean Taylor, because I feel like he deserved better. Um and obviously, the organization needs to honor a lot more than Sean Taylor. You know, he's definitely a great stepping stone as far as, you know, other players you can honor. But, you know, you got to do him right because taking pictures in front of a porta potty and doing a mannequin, how, I mean, how how many millions of dollars does Dan Snyder have and you, and you do a mannequin? It's just, he, 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 even when he's not even here, he, he irritates people because he was such a terrible owner and he was just a terrible human being. A mannequin? Come on, man. I mean, let's be, I mean, the Lakers have statues in front of the Staples Center. Or it's not called Staples Center anymore. Uh, I'm an old head. But um, so come on now. You can have a statue in front of FedEx or Commander's Field now. So many things are changing. Um, so I, I think that he's made a lot of errors. And um, the errors just are obviously, you know, the fact that he's connected to Dan Snyder, the errors that he, he made, you know, even though he, good guy, bad job, you know, he, he tried to do the best he could in this situation, but he made, you know, the thing, the errors he made to me are always going to be synonymous with Jason Wright in D.C. And, as, and, and it's, it, it is what it is. You can't really say you feel bad for him because these are massive errors. You have to honor Sean Taylor. You have to, 
you know, if you're going to do an, the top A and 90 greatest players in franchise history, history, as a member of the organization, you can't mess that up. And then they go on national TV and tell the, the, the world that the name commanders resonate with the fan base, I think is lazy, unprofessional, and just crazy. Um, but personally, I do like Jason Wright. You know, just, you know, but thing, the thing about sports is it's not a popularity contest. You know, while I do think he's a really nice guy, it was a pleasure meeting him and Mike Rizzo, the GM of my favorite baseball team. But ultimately, he just couldn't get the job done. And again, his name and his and his time in D.C. is going to be linked to Dan Snyder and the massive errors he made while being the president here for the Washington Commanders. So, um, again, you guys comment below. Let me and Greg know. You know, let us know what you guys think. You know, the Jason Wright era. And like I said, there's been criticism thrown at him for reasons other than football. And right now, just like everything in America, the, the it seems that the Washington Commanders fan base is very divided. If you look at the draft with quarterback, you know, and, and obviously there's still going to – I'm not going to get into it, you know, the reasons why he was criticized other than football. But I'll say this. You know, I think universally – this move for him not coming back is probably going to be applauded by most fans. You know what I'm saying? And, and obviously there's going to be people that have issues with him for the stupid reasons. And that's a, that's a very small percentage of the fan base. Um, most people who have eyes and a brain are going to tell you that Jason Wright made massive mistakes, man. And yes, I, I believe he, again, before I move on, yes, I believe he had a really hard job that to a certain degree, no matter what he did was probably going to be criticized. But if you look at the, the errors, he, I mean, to me, to a certain degree, um, I'm a forgiven person in the sports. So I'm not going to go out here and say, oh, it's all so unforgivable. But I'll say this, man, you know, when you really botch the Sean Taylor experience, because you can't redo that. You can't go back and, and do a renege with that. You know what I mean? You marred, uh, you know, you, you really jacked up a situation where, you you know, you had the opportunity to honor somebody who deserves to be honored. And you didn't give him or you didn't give his family all the amenities that, that you know, they deserve. To have them take a picture in front of a porta potty, to me was just wow. So, um, like I said, comment below. Let us know what you guys think about the Jason Wright era. You know, do you think he was unfairly treated, or do you feel like him not coming back? You know, the criticism he got was it warranted? You know, definitely because I believe that a lot of it was. So, you guys, let us know what you guys are thinking. So, let's get into training camp review. So, um, let's get into important dates and storylines, and maybe some position battles real quick for. Training camp, because training camp is right around the corner, y'all. I'm excited. I knew you are excited. The season is coming up, and we're ready to roll in a new era of Washington Commanders football. All right, so let's get into it, everybody. Um, number one, looking at some important dates. Rookies will um, – the rookies have already reported. They reported yesterday. Uh, the veterans will report on July 23rd, which is Tuesday. So – um, those are a couple of days. Obviously, the location is the Ortho Virginia Training Center at Commander's Park in Ashburn, Virginia. Um, I believe that not all the days, but most days have been um, sold out with tickets. Now, we're going to take a look at some of those dates going forward. But uh, but definitely, it's probably subject to change because I know the last couple of years, um, a lot of craziness, man. So, you know, definitely, definitely going to change things up. Because I know that, was it last year, they had a bus system that, um, they were ferrying people to the training camp area from the local mall in the Ashburn area, man. So, um, so let's look at this, some other important things. So, real quick, notable roster changes uh, to give you guys a heads up um, for you guys that missed the draft or free agency. If you did, man, I don't know how you call yourself a fan, but you know, let's look at some notable roster changes. Obviously, Jaden Daniels, uh, quarterback at LSU, num- uh, we drafted him number two overall in the first round, but. Um, Jerzon Newton, defensive tackle out of Illinois, drafted him number six overall in the second round. Mike Sanders still, a uh, cornerback out of Michigan. And he's a guy that I'm very excited about. You know, the same as, you know, I'm, you know obviously I'm excited about Jaden Daniels because he's going to be the future at quarterback for at least the next 10 years, in my humble opinion. And Newton, uh, the defensive tackle out of Illinois, great value pick. Uh, Sanders still could very well be the future at cornerback. Um, next. Also in the second round, because we have three second round picks with the number 53rd overall pick in the second round, Ben Sennett out of Kansas State, tied in. He's a very intriguing pick. Now, let's slide into the third round where we have two picks and number 67 overall. Brandon Coleman, offensive guard slash offensive tackle at a TCU right now. He's battling for the left tackle position. Number 100 overall in the third round, Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice. 
you know his brother, you know the dad. Ed McCaffrey of the Denver Broncos was his dad, and Christian McCaffrey is his brother. So he's got great lineage when it comes to football. Um, and rounding out the draft, everybody, Jordan Maggie, a linebacker out of Temple, very intriguing, 139th overall in the fifth round. Very intriguing and very well could be the future of linebacker, in my opinion. Even though the linebacker group right now is looking really, really good. Um, and numbers 161 overall in the fifth round, Dominic Hampton, safety out of the University of Washington. And rounding out the draft, everybody, number 222 in the seventh round, Javante Jean-Baptiste, defensive end out of Notre Dame. So that is just the notable moves through the draft. Look at that free agency real quick. Obviously, we picked up Marcus Mariota, quarterback. Austin Eckler, Eckler, my bad, Eckler, Eckler, uh, tight end Zach Ertz, offensive guard Nick Allegretti, offensive guard Michael Dieter, center Tyler Biadas, defensive end Dorrance Armstrong, and defensive end Cleland Farrell, defensive end Dante Fallon Jr., linebackers Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner, cornerback Michael Davis, and safety Jeremy Chant. So those are the notable roster changes for you. For you guys who live under rock, but obviously, you know, um, reasons to be excited. So let's take a look at the preseason schedule real quick because it kind of surprised me today because it's right around the corner, y'all, because we are about close to August 1st. Week one is at the New York Jets, 12 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday, August 10th. Week two of the preseason is at the Miami Dolphins, 7 o'clock Eastern time, Saturday, August 17th. And week three will be at Commanders Field versus the New England Patriots, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Sunday, August 25th on NBC. All right, so in some, some notes real quick for the schedule. Uh, the, the Commanders will open the season with three of the first four games on the road. Uh, Washington does not have a bye until week 14, which is the last week of the regular season buys. And the Commanders will face the Cowboys or the Eagles in four of the final seven games, man. So if we're in the middle of a race in the FC East, man, we're definitely – yeah, uh, it is it's, to me, it really behooves us to, to hit these. You know, really win these games against the Cowboys and the Eagles in the final seven in the four to seven uh, final seven games, man. Because especially if we're competing in the NFC East, which you know, I think that we're going to be better than advertised, but we're definitely going to be a team that still looking for chemistry, you know, going to have growing pains. And you very well can see us win anywhere from seven to nine games in my opinion man so i'm, I'm gonna pump the brakes real quick on playoffs but i definitely think we're gonna be a a, a sleeper team a, a team that's gonna be good just not ready to take that playoff step yet and then we were definitely gonna be we're gonna definitely gonna surprise people but i think that looking at chemistry looking at the fact that we have so many different uh players in, in different pieces on this team it's gonna take time for us to gel and find a chemistry on um, so let's move on guys like i said i'm looking at all the dates and important things to look at. So obviously there's new blood everywhere. So these are some storylines real quick before we move on, guys. New blood everywhere. You know, obviously new ownership, but new coaching staff and the Dan Quinn, new general manager and Adam Peters. And all of them has kind of shown what they can do. You know, small sample size, man, but, you know, definitely a new era, officially a new era. Because, again, new owner, new GM, new coaching staff, and a lot of new players, man. Um, let's see some more storylines to look at. Jaden Daniels, of course, is the man now, right? Now Marcus Mariota is the backup. Good reason. He, he is also a former second overall pick. He's a guy who's going to help mentor Jaden Daniels, but I think that Jaden Daniels is a man from day one. Um, he's a guy that is looked at from, from most people in the organization as the future of point guard. Oh, I'm not point guard, man. <laughs> you guys know I do locking wizards too. I, I have basketball in the mind all the time, also. Um, he's a future quarterback, right? Um, he's a future franchise quarterback for the, you know, for what we hope is the the next 10 plus years uh so in the storyline is you know how quickly does he pick up the offense how quickly do you see him kind of prosper in the system under dan quinn and i think that you know obviously you know we're looking at him you know what would be a success story with Jaden daniels you know will you, if you compare him to last year's number two overall cj stroud who came in and farly outplayed number one overall former number one overall pick bryce young uh cj stroud came in and Look, he looked good with Houston, man. You know, you look like a polished veteran, man. And so he came in and played good football. But, you know, definitely looking at Sage Stroud, you know, does he take, you know, does he have that sophomore slump? But again, he's a Houston Texan. We're looking at the commanders, y'all. So Jaden Daniels, you know, how quickly does he pick up the offense? How quickly does his impact felt on the on the football field? All right, so looking at a few other things. Look at Cliff Kingsbury. Look, Eric Bieniemy is no longer offensive coordinator. Cliff Kingsbury, as you know, head coach, man. Offensive coordinator, he's a guy who likes to pass the ball. But with the air raid offense, 
He's also going to get the run, the you know, the running backs a lot more involved. Brian Robinson, also Eckler is going to get more involved in the, uh, in, the in the passing downs, and Chris Rodriguez. So, you know, unlike Eric Bieniemy, which I'm not, you know, going to hit nobody while they're down, but unlike Eric Bieniemy, you know, he's a guy who's going to run an air raid offense, but he's going to be able to show a lot of love to the running back committee because look, Brian Robinson is a guy that I'm looking at. A thousand yards has to be a milestone for him this year. Um, Austin Eckler, obviously, at his age. How much of an impact does he have? I think he's going to be a lot more active in passing downs. Ron Robinson is going to be, you know, a lot more active in, in running the ball. And Chris Rodriguez is going to be a nice young change of pace back for us, man. Uh, so, you know, a lot to like with Cle Kingsbury, man, because, again, a lot of weapons. Not only Brian Robinson Jr., not only Austin Eckler and, and Chris Rodriguez Jr., Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dawson, Luke McCaffrey. You know, you've got Jameson Crowder. The list goes on. Deami Brown, Zach Ertz. Ben Sennett, you know, a lot of weapons, man. So can Cleve Kingsbury get the most out of this offense, man, and really utilize the weapons that he has? Another storyline to look at, is the defense going to be better? You know, um, a lot of good additions. You know, Bobby Wagner coming in, Frankie Louvu, man, a couple of good linebackers, man. Uh, Jamie Davis, you know, they're, they're going to make him, a, you know, more of an edge rusher, get him more involved in attacking the quarterback. A lot of things to love, man, but there's still questions, right? The question is the secondary. Can Emmanuel Force rebound from a very brutal rookie season? Um, you know, Mike Davis, is he the answer as starting cornerback? Or Mike Sam still, is he going to end up being part of the rotation as far as the one or the two cornerback position, man? So a lot of storylines with the defense. Obviously, I think we're good on the D-line. Um, obviously, you know, looking forward, you want to you want to make some changes at defensive end. Nobody on the roster right now is a long-term answer at defensive end. So I think the defensive end is something that's going to be addressed within the next couple of seasons. But you got guys going to hold it down until we find those right pieces. But the linebacker group, man, a lot to like. Bobby Wagner is a future Hall of Famer. You know, Frankie Louvu is a dog. And Jamin Davis, man, is going to be able to be more active with attacking the quarterback. And I think we're going to get them. This year, you're going to get the most out of Jamin Davis than you've seen previous seasons. Uh, but like I said, Manuel Forrest, can he rebound? Mike Davis, can he hold down number one? Benjamin St. Juice, where you know, where does he fall? Mike Samerson, where does he fall? A lot of answers, man. A lot to unfold. And finally, look at that kicker. Ramiz Ahmed is the kicker right now. Um, he handled kickoff duty for one game in Green Bay in 2022. So he's never attempted a regular season um field goal. So obviously, you kind of want to see them add another kicker for competition, but you know, like I said, he's got training camp to show what he can do. So, like I said, uh, a lot of this um the structure of this video, uh, shout out to NFL.com because they had a good in um good article that came out about the Washington Commanders and linking them to their training camp. So definitely shout out to NFL.com helping me with the structure of today's video, uh, giving me the important dates and whatnot. Uh, so like I said, guys, uh, training camp right around the corner, y'all. This week coming up is training camp. So like I said, I'm gonna try to get down there and get some coverage for everybody. But I'm very very excited because the season is almost here. I know the Greg is also very excited. So again. Appreciate you guys. Uh, comment below. Let me know. Um, let both of us know what you what is the legacy of Jason Wright? You know, is it a good one, bad one? You know, is it his fault he was linked to Dan Snyder, or was the errors and the mistakes he made totally on him? You guys let us know. And training camp, let us know, guys. One through ten. How excited are you about commanders football this season? Definitely let us know. So we will see you guys next time. Hail to the commanders, aka hail to the Redskins, and we will see you guys later.